I recently went on a trip to Death Valley National Park. It was a four-day trip, and I'm going to give you an overview of what I did and what I thought were the most amazing things to see at Death Valley National Park. The first day was mainly me just flying in to Vegas and uh, picking up a few groceries and then heading to Death Valley National Park. I arrived at, at Furnace Creek around 4.30, maybe a little after 4.30, and checked into the hotel. I was staying at Furnace Creek. I opted for the ranch at Death Valley, and I stayed at one of their newer lodges. It was between that and just a standard room at the inn, but it had everything that I needed, and I didn't need the added luxuries of the inn, just me being by myself. I'm there to explore the park anyway. That first day, I basically checked into the hotel, and I actually drove through to Mustard Canyon in the dark and uh, sat there and, and stargazed for, you know, maybe 45 minutes or an hour. But it's a great, great uh, place to stargaze Death Valley. The next day, I planned to go to Zabriskie Point, and I had researched that you can hike up the Golden Canyon Trail and get to Zabriskie Point from there, and it's uh, much less crowded than actually going to the, Z the main Zabriskie Point viewpoint so i i did that i woke up and i got to the golden canyon trail at 6 a.m it was still dark out i started hiking up i had to use my phone as my flashlight to actually see things and it was a little bit scary <laughs> when it's dark it's scary in this place when it's dark guys i'm just letting you know so i'm i'm hiking up and around 6 30 it's basically light out and i can i can see everything just fine and I get to a certain point, and I look back, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's a brisky point. And it's so beautiful. There's this beautiful sight. And I sit there for, you know, I t take pictures and video, and then I just sit there and taking in the view for about 30 minutes. That wasn't Zabriskie Point. It was, I mean, it was just as beautiful because I went back later and saw Zabriskie Point. But I continued the hike through the Golden Canyon Trail and circled through the Gower Gulch. And there were a lot of great places to, to take pictures. It's such a photogenic hike, that loop there. Uh, and basically you can make the loop from the Golden Canyon Trail through the Gower Gulch and then back to your car. And the Gower Gulch, I thought, was the most amazing trail that I went on in the entire park. It was just so photogenic. Everywhere you could take a picture and you're hiking through canyons and, and just rock features and you're doing a little bit of rock climbing at certain points. And, you know, the whole park has this beautiful mountain backdrop and that's really highlighted in the Gower Gulch Trail. So that's just an amazing trail. So I highly recommend going on that, that loop, the Golden Canyon Trail, uh, circling through the Gower Gulch. Or you can start at Zabriskie Point and way down through the Golden Canyon Trail, circle back up through the Gower Gulch, back up to Zabriskie Point. But since I didn't start there, I didn't do that. Anyway, next stop was Artist Palette. You make the drive, it's called the Artist Drive, I believe. And uh, there's a certain point where you can stop and take pictures uh, of just the, the scenery at first, not, not the actual artist's palette. And as you're driving, you can actually see the artist's palette once you get to a certain point, And you're like, oh, wow, that's it. Because it's, you know, it's strikingly colorful in this desert landscape. Once you pull into the parking lot there, you can go down and hike up or climb up through these, uh, these little hills, these colorful hills. During the day, which I was there probably around 930, 10 o'clock, in the morning, it gets a little bit washed out by the sun. So I did end up going back later in the trip, which I'll show you some pictures of. But just being there during the day, it's not, you know, the ideal time to go because the colors do get a little washed out by the sun if you're taking pictures. The next stop I made was Devil's Golf Course, which is one of those stops you kind of have to make. It's one of the things that Death Valley is known for. It's just basically a field of salty, jagged rocks. You could walk out amongst them just as far as you want to go. I don't think you're going to spend a ton of time here. You're not going to have a picnic with the uh, with the salty rocks. You're just going to, you know, you're going to go, you're going to see them, you're going to touch them, and maybe, you know, lick one to taste the salt, and then you're going to get on your way. My next stop was the Natural Bridge, and you're going to drive up a rocky gravel road to the parking area. You'll get out, and then you'll hike up to the Natural Bridge itself. And you'll be hiking up gravel as well, and you're going uphill. So it's not the easiest hike, but it's not terribly difficult. So you'll get there, and you can take pictures from the front, which a lot of people were doing. Or you can go through to the other side and take pictures from that side, which I thought turned out a little bit better. You can also continue the hike and continue past the natural bridge itself. You'll end up at this area where you can do a little, little bit of rock climbing. 
there's an area on the right with smoother type rock and you need a little bit grippier shoes if you're gonna climb up it uh, but I believe water runs down when it rains and it, it causes that rock to be a little bit smoother so you'll climb up there and you'll get to a certain point where a rock has fallen in between two sides of this little miniature canyon and it's almost a little bit scary going underneath it because it's a humongous boulder and it could crush you to death but when you get on the other side you're just in the middle of this uh, kind of alcove canyon type thing uh, just a smaller alcove canyon you're surrounded by rock on all sides and i thought that was just such a cool part of the trip i took a few pic pictures but it's not a f super photogenic area when you climb back down the rock is smooth so at the end i uh, got down on my butt and just slid down so i knew i wasn't gonna bust my butt trying to walk down on my feet after that i went to uh, badwater basin i look at badwater basin like Old Faithful in Yellowstone. It's one of the main things the park is known for. It's uh, just an amazing feature of the park. You're not going to spend all day here. It's not the most awe-inspiring part of the park, but you have to see it. It's kind of like a bucket list type thing. When you're at the park, you got to check that off of your list, and it's definitely worth doing. Definitely don't skip it. After this, I planned on going to Dante's View for sunset, but I went on an off-road trail and got stuck at a certain point and had to weasel my way out, and that took a lot longer than I expected, and I ended up getting back when it was getting dark, and so I wouldn't have been able to make it to Dante's view. I would say do do the main things. Don't get sidetracked and <laughs> go on these trails unless you just have nothing else to do and uh, there's no service in the park so it can be kind of scary if you get stuck on something. On day two my first stop was the Mesquite Sand Dunes and just like Badwater Basin the sand dunes are incredible and they're very beautiful but they're not the most awe-inspiring view you're going to see at Death Valley. So I got some great pictures and they're great to take pictures of, but more than anything, I found myself after I left there thinking, you know what, I wanna go back there and just like hang out on the dunes and get some sun. And everything has this beautiful mountain backdrop, so everything in the park is gonna be super photogenic. But I found it was one of those places where I wanted to go back and enjoy it again. After the sand dunes, I went to the Mosaic Canyon, which is right next to it. And th this is a cool hike. It's not quite as impressive as the Golden Canyon and Gower Gulch Trail, but it's still definitely worth doing. There's some cool sights. It's, it's not a loop. You're going to hike in and see everything, and then you're going to hike right back out. And especially right there at the uh, opening area to the, the trail is some really cool rock features that you're going to walk through. So I really enjoyed that part of it. Next stop was Skidoo, which I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. Skidoo was the remains of the people that lived there and you can see their work places you can see their little huts that they lived in wherever they mined they had mining facilities you can see like broken bottles <laughs> a lot of places and cans and things so it's it's easy to kind of uh, put yourself back in that that time and imagine what these people were like. Most of the road there, it can fit two cars, but at a certain point, you're going around this steeper part where there's a bigger drop off and then you're going around. And that part made me a little bit uneasy because what if somebody else is coming the other way? So basically I just drove up until I found a spot where I could turn around and then I turned around and came back down. I didn't go up all the way on this skidoo trail area. The next stop, I was going to Augerberry Point. Before there, you can stop at Eureka Mine, and that was an interesting place. I just got out and took a few pictures of the Eureka Mine. It was very similar to, I mean, everything you're going to see at the Skidoo area. I just made that a quick stop, the Eureka Mine, and got onto to Augerberry Point, which I heard was amazing, and it is amazing. It's just a, a phenomenal view of the park, and there was a guide up there with some other tourists at the time taking them on a guided trip. And I started talking to him, and I said, man, if there's a better view in the park, I don't know if I'll believe you if you tell me that. And he said, well, there's one better view. It's Telescope Peak. He said he's driven up to it a few times, and uh, he said most people hike it. Uh, but it's a full full day trip you're going to have to make. But Augerberry Point was everything you'd imagine it to be. It's definitely cold up there when you go up to the, the top of that. A little area there I mean it's just an amazing view I, I thought that it was just so worthwhile to go up there 
you're going to need a, a car with a little bit of clearance. I was in a Jeep, so it was totally fine, but you, I don't think you would need four-wheel drive, and uh, the maps say you don't. The next stop after Augerberry Point was Wildflower Canyon and the Charcoal Kilns, and the Charcoal Kilns is just a great ending point to the Wildflower Canyon. The Wildflower Canyon is just really beautiful. And it's kind of different types of mountains to everything else that you're going to see. And I went during the winter, so I don't know if there are actually wildflowers there. That would be a fitting uh, fitting name for the canyon if that was the case. But uh, it was just a beautiful area. I got out at a certain point and took a few pictures. And it was such a worthwhile drive to drive through there. I thought it was such a great uh, a great area. And the charcoal kilns were just a cool ending to it. You can actually hike up to Telescope Peak. Uh, at the charcoal kilns it was snowy and icy at that point so if you're gonna hike up during the winter you're probably gonna have to have to hike through some snow day three I did Dante's view at sunrise which was probably the best view that I saw and I didn't see Augerberry Point at sunrise I'm sure that that you know that might have taken the cake if I had seen that at sunrise, but Dante's view at sunrise was just amazing, and uh, it was super cold up there on that peak. If you're going there during the winter, if you're hanging out at Furnace Creek, it might it's probably going to be 65, 70 degrees and sunny, but if you're up at Dante's view, it is shockingly cold and windy. The wind is just unrelenting. And uh, I was shivering up there. So make sure you wear some cold weather clothes if you're going up during the winter. After then, I went down, went, went back down, and I did the 20 Mule Team Canyon, which is a drive-through loop. This was, uh, it was interesting, but it was probably the least impressive thing I saw on the entire trip. If you've got an extra few minutes, it's uh, still definitely worth going through. But there's no really amazing view. It's just kind of a, it's a cool thing to to take up a few minutes. I think it took about 15 minutes to, to drive through. After this, I would have gone to see the Yubahebi Crater, but that was closed due to flooding the previous year. The whole northern part of the park was closed. So I did have to find a few things to do to fill in a little bit of time this day, but it wasn't that difficult. So uh, after that, I went back to the hotel and uh, had a meal and hung out in the sun for, for maybe an hour or two. And then I I got a little antsy, so I went to Zabriskie Point, the actual Zabriskie Point, not the uh, the faux Zabriskie Point that I uh, that I thought I was at, and uh, did that hike there. And I ended up going back the next day at, at sunrise before I went back to the Vegas airport, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. And uh, I hiked that trail, and I just did the Zabriskie Trail loop. You are going to hike down, and then you're going to have to hike right back up. So that is, that's how that trail goes. It's definitely cool. It wasn't as uh, amazing, I think, as the Golden Canyon or the Gower Gulch, but it was still uh, definitely a cool place to hike down through these Badland mounds. I took my time with this because I only had one more thing to do that day, which was to go back to the artist's palette to experience that during sunset and to get some better pictures when the colors weren't all washed out by the sun. I actually went a little bit early to the artist's palette so that I could walk amongst the colorful mounds and climb up through them and see all the different colors up close, which was a really interesting experience. And I would definitely recommend that. You're missing out if you just stand by your car or stand up on that ledge and take pictures from there. You, you really miss out on the full experience of walking amongst these big colorful rocks. I ended up climbing up on a big rock right at, at sunset and taking pictures from there and the pictures turned out much better than they did during the day when the sun was shining down. That was the final thing I did that day. The next day I was flying out that afternoon, but I did want to stop by Zabriskie Point at sunrise just to see it at its full glory and to get the best pictures that I could. So I did that. I got there around 30 minutes early. It was very crowded, but it was definitely worth it. I stayed for sunrise and took a ton of pictures. It was just a beautiful sight. And it was a great end to my Death Valley trip. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will certainly be making more of these National Park videos in the future. So I hope you stick around. Bye.